And at last, Hulk Hogan says, after his match against the Honky Tonk Man tonight, they'll play a real American so he can dance in his blue suede shoes and drive away in his pink Cadillac because he ate nothing but a hound dog. The puns were strong with Mr. Hogan tonight. You know what's funny is when, when you think of Hulk Hogan, if you don't watch a lot of these shows, you just think of the generic Hulk Hogan. He wears red and yellow, or he wore his NWO shirt or whatever. He did the finger po or the, the finger point, the leg drop of doom. He did do the finger poke. You're seeing this very generic Hulk Hogan, okay? And yes, he did do a finger poke. But actually, in the 80s, Hogan did all sorts of very, very wacky things in his matches, in his promos. He would imitate people. We see him doing the honky-tonk man dance at the end of his match. This was a very... I got a lot to say about Hogan, but I'll, I'll save it for his match. But a very charismatic, very wacky man. What a revelation. Yes. Yes, I'm writing yes. this down. Wait Hulk till you hear Hogan. the revolution. That, wait, well, the revelation I came up with in his match, just you wait. This will set new standards for should this we, program. Should we skip ahead? I'm not sure I can handle the anticipation. You must wait, Vinny. <sighs> cruel. Cruel man. Hulk Hogan, energetic, and... I didn't say energetic. I said charismatic. And Get charismatic. the white out. Get yes. the white out. Please. Charismatic and wacky. He also said wacky. Yes. Wacky. He does a hound dog joke for the honky-tonk man. All right. It's all written down. Let it be noted. He was... You know what I'll say? He was not generic. No. He was not generic. There was not a Hulk Hogan pattern yet. Except I still watch these shows, and I don't know what this guy's going to come up with. I got that, Craig. Thank you. I did not expect him... To do the lyrics to Hound Dog when talking about the Honky Tonk Man. That caught me off guard. Nor did I expect him to shake his ass after beating the Honky Tonk Man. Well, that also alert. caught me off guard. That's your lucky night. Yes. I got more than I bargained for <laughs> from the Hulkster. <laughs> so we are told this is a special summertime bonus episode of Saturday Night's Main Event. Vince and okay, Vince and Jesse run down the card. They open with Hulk Hogan defending the world championship against the Honky Tonk Man, who is factually the longest reigning intercontinental champion of all time. Mm -hmm. they, that's an awfully big TV match right there. So they open with that. You also have Jimmy Snuka with a, with Greg, uh, versus Greg Valentine with Ronnie Garvin, a special referee. Demolition versus the Brain Busters, two out of three falls. And then Randy Savage versus Brutus Beefcake after a world championship match and a tag team title match, which we are then told Savage and Beefcake is probably the biggest match of the night. Yeah, I don't, I don't buy that. Who said that? Probably Vince. I think it was Jesse. I'm not sure. Oh, come on, Jesse. We got a clip of Honky Tonk Man's greatest hits. Oh, my God. So his greatest hits are he's hitting everybody with a guitar. So for you youngsters out there that maybe you grew up watching TNA mm -hmm. and you saw Jeff Jarrett hitting everybody with a guitar on every fucking single solitary show for like 18 years. What Jarrett did was he had fake guitars that he filled with powder. Sure. And so when you whack somebody, the, it just exploded and all this powder flew all over the, all over the place. I don't know what the powder was. I mean... I guess. But that's what he did. Honky Tonk Man got legit guitars that you could actually play because he would strum mm -hmm. the strings. And inside a guitar, I've actually got a guitar. Uh-huh. Look. Sorry, everybody. Inside the guitar, there are these... Can you see them? These other sideways frames that go across it like this. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. Getting my pen out again. Okay. It's irrelevant, Craig. Sideway frames. By the way, the point is, they would take a guitar and they would take all of those out. I'm trying to think okay. of a good way to describe what it is. It's a... Uh, you haven't found it yet. Uh, da, da, da. Stabilizing. A stabilizer. Stabilizing pieces of wood. Okay? They took them out so that it would break easier. Okay? Note I said easier. He fucking waffled these poor motherfuckers with this guitar. 
<laughs> and the guitar did not smash into pieces. No. The it neck did not break in half. No. no. Because there's a fucking industrial guitar right here. And the best that would happen is there would be like a little dent where their head was. Honky's fucking nailing these guys from behind, from the front, just fucking killing these poor dudes. Am I the only one that noticed this? No. This looked like a tragedy waiting to happen. Well, we see him, see him hitting Jake Roberts with a guitar. Right in the back of the head. And the ultimate warrior with a guitar. And Jimmy Snuka and Bret Hart and Brutus Beefcake. There's probably others, but that's what we saw. So then Gene's question for Honky Tonk Man is, is this the way you are going to go after Hulk Hogan? Honky explains he is true to himself. He's true to his fans. He will keep doing the things that made him the greatest intercontinental champion of all time. At the end of the night, he says, all of those Hulkamaniacs will be, he actually said this, Honky Maniacs. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I wrote and deleted 20 different jokes about honky maniacs. Oh, man. <laughs> so then Gene's question for Hulkster is, with all the big things going on in your life right now, the movies coming out, uh, and also the big match coming up at SummerSlam. Dude, the movie had been out for months. A oh, movie is out now, but the, the SummerSlam is the bigger news because usually they do these main event shows, and I don't know if they weren't allowed to or just forgot but they almost never mentioned the pay-per-view by name. So they mentioned SummerSlam is on the horizon here, so that's coming up. Hulk says this is how he likes it. The WWF title is his number one priority. He and the Hulkamaniacs would never forget that. He likes having tough challengers, being champion, fighting tough contenders from all over the world. Honky is tough in the best shape of his life. And then uh, Gene says this. The Honky Tonk Man is a tough challenger. He is in the best shape of his life. Your thoughts. So, yes, they have been asking that stupid question now for 30 years. So, uh, Hogan says, you and Jimmy Hart, Honky Tonk Man and Jimmy Hart, not Gene, are going to try to steal this belt, but I will keep it with the Hulkamaniacs watching my back. You know, Brian, I, your thoughts. I don't know if this is the case or not, but when you think about it, these Saturday night's main events did very well. And particularly the main event, 33 million viewers. So I'm wondering if maybe there was a renegotiation period. And because the shows were doing so well, Vince laid down the law. We'll, we'll resign, but we want to be able to plug these upcoming pay-per-views. Because it's true. We, we watched those first couple of years of Saturday Night's main event, and they never plugged anything for a pay-per-view. Now they're here plugging. This whole show is about plugging SummerSlam. Hulk Hogan and Brutus Beefcake versus Zeus and Macho Man Randy Savage in a tag team main event. A main event anywhere in this on this planet. So, yeah, it was fine. They didn't even bring up No Holds Barred the last time they did Saturday Night's main event. They did say the words No Holds Barred one time. That's true. And Zeus was on that show too. Yes, yeah. yes. I actually thought this one sounded, compared to the other Hulk Hogan promos we've been watching for the past, we're into four years of SNME now, and this one seemed more scripted and rehearsed to me. Maybe it's just me. Actually, all the promos on this show were very scripted and rehearsed. So it's Hulk Hogan versus Honky Tonk Man. All right, are you ready? You've been waiting. Mm -hmm. Right, have at it. For my revelation here. Yes. All right, so first off, Honky's got a great entrance. So yes. I was a honky maniac. And the first thing he tries to do is he tries to hit Hogan with his guitar. And thankfully he missed because that thing's a fucking deadly weapon. Jimmy jumps on Hogan's back. Hogan is outside the ring. They're brawling. Jimmy jumps on Hogan's back. Hogan has to walk to the ring, up the steps, and get in the ring with Jimmy on his back because they got a spot planned. Yes. Now, before you get any farther... They actually have to work together on this? Yes, that's right. what I was getting to. Okay, yes. Okay. Hogan has to go between the top and the middle rope. Yes. But Jimmy doesn't fit because Hogan's big. <laughs> right. So as Hogan is going through the bottom or the middle and the top rope, Jimmy's going over the top rope. Yes. yes. While still on his back. <laughs> that was awesome. That was very impressive. <laughs> and the most impressive thing is I don't think they practiced it. 
I think they figured out when they were about to get in, we don't have enough fucking room for this. Because there's a brief pause, and there's a lot of shifting, and then they manage to get into the ring. So, Hogan's just beating the hell out of him. He does the old school noggin knocker. And finally, Hogan is beating on Honky outside. The ref is yelling at him. He's counting. And fucking Jimmy Hart runs up behind and hits Hulk Hogan with a guitar. Mm -hmm. And the referee has to pretend he didn't see it. Yes. Impossible. You have to understand, at the exact moment the guitar collides with Hulk Hogan's back, Hulk Hogan's hands are on the Honky Tonk Man's throat. Yes. And his arms are not 19 feet long. And Jesse's like, arm length. He, he must have been looking right at, at Honky. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm like, fuck, you could have been looking into the 50th row, and how could you not see or hear this happen? But anyway, now I'll get to the point. Do you remember that main event where Hulk Hogan got screwed out of the title? Of course. And he went backstage and Rings he bell. cried. Yes. yes. And he, he was in fucking tears to have lost the WWF championship. When Hogan is selling, he's virtually weeping. He's not just sitting there and reaching for the people and, and showing them that he's hurt. He's practically in tears. Hulk Hogan selling. Why well, hear about like Vince doesn't think that Keith Lee can work or that Otis can work? Fuck. Just send those guys somewhere. Just send them home and have them watch all of Hulk Hogan on Saturday night's main event in the 80s. Have them watch this fucking guy sell. He's so good at it. You feel so bad. You you look at him like he's Terry and he's been stabbed with something sharp. He's He's crawling on the ground. He's brown. <laughs> He's crying. He's in such intense pain. You just feel for this man. And when you think about like the 90s and these Nashes and all these, they had to be a, a, a tough, like a tough guy heel. Mm-hmm. And you never sold anything. And titles coming, all this other bullshit. That is the polar opposite of Hulk Hogan. Man, when this guy was hurting, he, this grown man cried. And this grown man begged for mercy. And remember he used to, like, in the, in the warrior match, he would actually be on his knees or on his belly, and he would be hugging the warrior's leg, pleading and begging for mercy. That's a fucking baby face. And he sold like that for the honky-tonk man. And so after selling, after practically crying in the ring, when this guy finally, oh, now he's mad. And now he's not selling. And now he's firing up. The fucking fans in the audience, they're jumping up and down and mm-hmm. screaming and going crazy. This match was so simple. It was so easy. It's a Honky Tonk Man match for crying out loud. I was going to say. I mean, but fuck, they got so much out of nothing. And they got it. Because Hogan was such a sympathetic character when it was time for the bad guy to get the heat on him. It's a fucking masterpiece here. You make some excellent points, particularly about Hogan. That was a revelation, in fact. Hulk Hogan was very good at selling. That is true. But it was a revelation how good he was and how far he would go to make you feel bad for him. He'd practically cry. A grown 330-pound man, the champion. He would practically cry... To get you behind him. And you're also very right. When Hogan made his comeback, dropped the big leg and won, the place went ape fucking shit. Mm -hmm. Just completely insane. All of that is true. All of that is true. And I I, I do certainly agree that uh, young, hopeful pro wrestlers or aspiring pro wrestlers or even veteran pro wrestlers who maybe aren't good at this particular thing, watch Hulk Hogan matches and learn how to sell. That's a fair statement. And fire up. And what uh, and what you did miss, Brian? Not only did Jimmy Hart, El Cabong, Hulk Hogan on the outside, but Hulk Hogan got the guitar and hit the honky tonk man as he was getting into the ring. Well, yeah, and the ref was looking we'll, right at him. We'll get to the finish, but before that happened, Honky hits a shake rattle roll, which is preposterous. <laughs> it's just it's ridiculous. Sure, he hits his move, and he actually took a bump, so. 
That was impressive. <laughs> he has working <laughs> shoes on. Yeah, he didn't fall and to his knees. And then he starts to dance. And Vince, like Vince is a baby face, and he's for the baby faces, but even he calls Honky an idiot for not just making the cover. But I knew what was up. He was protecting his finish. Mm. He hits I his see. finish. The guy's going to fucking kick out. Sure. So waste a little time. Shake your ass. Yell at the people. Sl- and he's like, he just does the most dramatic drop to his knees. He makes the cover. And fuck, he waited so long that the moment he covered that guy, Hogan shot him 30 feet in the air. He didn't wait for the two count. He just kicks this guy off. And he, in fact, he does the big comeback. He hits the big boot. Honky for- rolls outside. Hogan gets outside. He el kabongs this guy right in front of Earl Hebner. Yes. Hebner just watches it, and Hogan goes in, hits a leg drop, and gets the pin. Normally, I wouldn't give a shit, but after the finish in the second fall of the demolition match, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what a load of horse shit this was. So in this match, we had Jimmy Hart hitting Hulk Hogan with a guitar right in front of the referee. We had Hogan dragging Jimmy Hart into the ring and throwing him at the Honky Tonk Man, not a DQ. We had Hogan hitting both men with a guitar at the finish right in front of the referee. None of this was a DQ. And finally, Hogan just won. So, yes, there was a lot of bullshit. And it, it, <laughs> the more I look back at this, the more my feelings are mixed. Because... There was, I liked it a lot. They they mm-hmm. got they got the mo- the most out of what they did. That's for sure, and it absolutely worked in the building, and the place went absolutely crazy. But it's it, we we have now hit standard uh, cartoon formula Hogan. It, it, every match is going to be the same from here on out. Uh, we and and the 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 illogic of what is and is not a DQ. We'll just ignore it all because Hulk says so. I guess that kind of made me mad. But you know what? Yes, the place went crazy. Hogan wins. All is right with the world. There you go. The finish was bullshit. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna argue that at all. But at the end of the day, this was 1989 Hulk Hogan versus 1989 Honky Tonk Man, and this so overachieved. <laughs> and why? Because of all of the little things that they did. Neither of them did anything even remotely approaching exciting and that's no that's disrespect <laughs> to either guy it was like they knew what they could do they were going to be on the road 300 dates a year there's no fucking need to kill your why would you kill yourself if you can get this kind of reaction doing what they did true i guess if you want to get a star rating in the observer but they didn't give a shit about that they wanted their fucking check and they wanted their check next week and the week after and the week after as long as they could get it so I was very impressed with what they got out of nothing in this match here. This match was a ton of fun. It uh, brought me back to my childhood and loving Hulk Hogan. Even in my ninth grade yearbook, my quote was, Hulkamania will live forever. Yes, that really happened. And uh, Even you, worse, you brought it up here. I did. <laughs> yeah, several times now. <laughs> and uh, if you want to see a proper selling of an uh, atomic drop, the Honky Tonk Man won over my heart with his selling of an atomic drop tonight. That's a very good point. Better or worse than Rick Rude? It was right up there with Rick Rude, right. actually. I remember Tito Santana once gave the Honky Tonk Man an atomic drop, and Honky sold it by strutting like a chicken all the way across the ring. <laughs> yeah, why, why, why did the atomic drop die in pro wrestling? I know. It needs to come back. It needs to come back immediately. It's perfect for Otis, actually, now that I think about it. Sure. So we go to break. We come back. Hulk Hogan is still in the ring flexing. Jesse is begging for someone to cl- come clear the ring. They do have more matches, you know. Get this glory hog Hulk's right out of the ring. If you love these video clips, head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes. Over 300 at current count. Full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Landstorm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.